You are most welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday the 7th of October. Now the main thing I want to look at today is this sort of, I suppose, a bit infam infamous now really, COVID toes and fingers, COVID digits. But before we do that, I just want to look at some COVID symptom tracker data because there's a couple of important points to just go over there before we get on to the main, to, to the main course. So I just want to mention this to begin with. Now, most common symptoms in people that are vaccinated in children. Now, this has still not changed. The reason I want to stress this is it's still not changed on the UK government website. Why on earth is it so out of date? It's like it's about 18 months now or something, I think, since they've updated. It's just incredible. So, so we know that if people are vaccinated and children, whether the children are vaccinated or not, the most common feature they get, 76% in vaccinated people, is a runny nose. So that's the most common feature. 75% of people get a headache, 66% get sneezing, 52% get a sore throat, and only 52% get loss of smell. And as we see, uh, fever nor chronic cough is in the top symptom. Now, you can get fever and chronic cough, of course, but it's not the most common thing. So most people are going to present with one or two of these, or, or maybe even three of these, runny nose, headache, sneezing, sore throat, loss of smell, Fever or chronic cough not necessarily present. Now, the COVID symptom tracker data estimates that because the government in the UK hasn't updated this, it really um, very hard to... Other governments have, but the UK government hasn't. Um, Out-of-date government advice misses 40% of infections, which is perhaps one of the main reasons that the prevalence in the UK remains so high compared to other countries. So... That, that, that's that's a simple statement of fact. That's from the COVID symptom tracker data. They are now the most common symptoms. Now, just one other thing from uh, the COVID symptom tracker data, natural infection. Now, I watched Tim Spector's talk on this, and he said this is probably good news, but I'm not so sure from what he said, actually. So let, let me just say what he said. Uh, people that have had natural infection, in other words, that have had the virus, get a 65% protection against symptomatic disease. Now, I'm going to come back to that in a minute because I'm putting a question mark on that now. But two doses of AstraZeneca vaccine in the past six months, people get a 71% protected against um, symptomatic disease. Two doses of Pfizer vaccine uh, in the past six months gives 83% protection. So more from Pfizer protection from Pfizer 71 versus 83 after six months at least now whether this is still go whether the Oxford AstraZeneca is still going to be demonstrating immunity in a year's time or more we, we don't know we don't know about the longevity but this is six month data now if you've added the infection in the past year followed by two doses of AstraZeneca you get a 90 percent protection so that's the infection followed by two doses of vaccine if you get infection in the past year followed by two doses of Pfizer, you get a 94% protection against symptomatic disease. Now, what we still don't know frustratingly, although we're having pretty good guesses, but we still don't know what happens if you do it the other way around. So what happens if you have the two doses of vaccine, then you get an infection? Well, my very strong hunch is that the levels of infection, the levels of immunity, sorry, after two doses of the vaccine followed by the infection are going to be pretty well the same if not better, in fact, as the infection followed by two doses of the vaccine. But we don't know that definitively yet. Now, the bit that caught my eye about the, uh, the this uh, COVID symptom tracker data was this. 65% um, protection. If someone's had the natural infection within the past year, only 65% protection against uh, symptomatic disease. Now, yes, they're going to have more uh, protection against severe disease, hospitalisation and death. But that 65% is inconsistent. There's no other way to put it. It's inconsistent with the Israeli data we looked at a few days ago. So um, it definitely contradicts that. So this was the paper we looked at a few days ago, about three, four days ago now from Israel. That was the link for it there. And here, protection from prior SARS coronavirus 2 infection gave 94.8% protection. So it can't be 65 in the UK and... Uh, Basically, 65, was it 65? Yeah, 65 in the UK and basically 95 in Israel. That just doesn't make sense. This is a contradiction. Now, I think there's probably something wrong with the COVID symptom tracker data here because the Israeli study, if you remember from a few days ago, was based on very large scale numbers. 
So we think the Israeli data is probably more accurate. So what's quite gone wrong there, we don't know. Um, we might see a correction from, from the, the COVID symptoms, Zoe people, on that, but it does seem remarkably low. Um, protection from hospitalisation after natural infection was 94.1% and protection against severe illness was 96.4%. And again, um, and again, th these were almost as good with people that had uh, two doses of vaccine. But the Israeli data there showing that the natural infection is better, better at pre preventing disease, hospitalizations and deaths than two vaccines. Whereas the UK COVID symptom tracker data is saying that um, it's the other way around. It's saying that natural infection is not as good as two doses of vaccine. 65 for natural infection, 71 for two doses of AstraZeneca and 83 for two doses of Pfizer. So there you go. That is a clear contradiction. No two ways about it.